Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to this tutorial on Autodesk Fusion 360. In this tutorial, we are going to learn the basics of this program, and we're also going to design a simple project known as the Puzzle Cube. And this is actually a traditional inventor project, if you've ever used that, but we're going to translate that to this newer software to see how it works out. Anyway, the concept of a Puzzle Cube is to design five pieces that interlock with one another and create a cube, a 3x3 three three cube. And we should be able to do all the same things that we could in Inventor, minus this drawing sheet, in Fusion 360. So let's go ahead and get started. What I'd like you to do is first let's head over to Sketch, and you're going to be greeted with three planes. Typically you want to choose one of these planes to work on, so I'm just going to click on this one, and it's going to take me to a Sketch mode. And now I'm going to draw out a square. So underneath sketch I can use my line tool or a rectangle and I want to make sure I have a two point rectangle click on that and then draw out a one inch square. And now one of the cool things about Fusion 360 is that when you have a closed profile shape it will automatically be filled in so right now this is a closed profile shape and that's important because you cannot extrude non-profiled shapes or non-closed off shapes. Go ahead and press the D key on the keyboard and that's going to activate your dimension tool. And then you can click on the line, move over here, let's say, click, and I'm going to change this from 35 millimeters, which is where I just randomly clicked at, to 1 inch. Enter. And I'm going to do the same with this side one inch and now we have what we need for our cube so I'm gonna stop this sketch and now I'm going to extrude this out and to extrude something just press E on the keyboard and click on that profile and you're gonna be greeted with an arrow and you can grab that arrow and you can stretch this or we can just type in a dimension in the distance box so one inch enter and now we have a one inch cube. Awesome! Things are looking great. Now, something cool about this program is that everything is saved to the cloud. So if you head over to these dots up here and click on those, you're going to be greeted with like your cloud space. And yours is actually going to look something like this. What I'd like you to do is create a new project and then type in puzzle cube project or something or the pro puzzle cube project since I've already used that but you're gonna hit new project and you're creating a folder right now where we're gonna be able to store in everything that we make that's mine the puzzle cube project um, I'm also going to pin it so that makes it like the priority project I'm working on and now I'm going to click the X and we're gonna save this puzzle cube piece so go over to save and go ahead and save it to your the puzzle cube project. I'm just going to call this generic puzzle piece. Except I'm going to spell it correctly. Generic puzzle piece looks pretty good. I'm going to hit save and now it's going to save it to the cloud. So when I open up my folder and go to the puzzle cube project, you can see right here is where the piece is being saved to. So let's just give that one second to get started. And when that is done, like so, let's go ahead and create a new file. Let's go over to File, New Design. And in this brand new design, what I'd like you to do is open up that option for your folder. And I want you to grab a puzzle cube and drop it in your file. So now we're entering something known as an assembly. Let me actually zoom in. Oh, and if you're not sure how to control this, you can use the middle scroll wheel on the mouse to zoom in and out. And if you hold down shift and click in the middle scroll wheel, you can rotate your screen like so. And if you just click in the middle scroll wheel, you can pan your screen. So a lot of people rely on this view cube over here. I only use it when I'm orienting my screen to be at a specific look. So if I want to look exactly right, I will click on it. 
or if I want to look exactly home position, I will click on it. But normally I'm just using the middle scroll wheel to like rotate by holding down that shift key or zoom in and out, so on and so forth. But anyway, let's try that again. I'm going to grab this piece and drop it into this file. And it's saying please save this before you do that. So let's go ahead and save this. We're going to call this puzzle piece 1 and make sure it's saved into there. I'm going to hit save. You can see it's saving. Let's go ahead and give it a second to save. So really it's going to depend on your internet speed. But it looks like it's been saved so now let's drop in a piece. That's looking awesome. Let's go ahead and drop in a couple more pieces so drop another piece and you're gonna say like wait there's only one piece but in reality it just kind of overlays them so I'm gonna move this piece over here and press enter it's very important that you press that enter key because if you don't it will n just not really respond the way you want it to okay so let's make let's say this red one first so it's got one two three four five red blocks one two let's drop in a third one fourth one and fifth one okay so we have our five red blocks here let's go ahead and assemble these such that they are stuck together and to do that let me just take a quick look so it's like an L with one sticking out perfect we are going to use I'm gonna close this also for the time being use the joint tool so head over to the assemble tab and go over to where it says joint click on that and now we just need to make sure we click on the center so I'm gonna click on the center of this cube to the center of let's say this part and you're gonna see that it joins it together and if I hit OK it's been joined and we can try that again but this time I want you to press J on the keyboard that's gonna automatically open up the joint tool and now I should also mention that the piece you click on first is the piece to move. So I'm going to click on this, which means it's going to move and the other pieces aren't. And I'm going to rotate my screen by holding down shift in the middle scroll wheel mouse. I'm going to click here and you're going to see that piece moved. And then I hit enter. Press J and re repeat. So I want this to move. So I click it first and then I click where it should go. That like squiggly thing that happens over there that's just indicating that it's a rigid type which means that it's gonna have zero degrees of freedom meaning it can't move so we have those let's add this last one J click here to here and press enter so there we go that is this piece over here now let's go ahead and add some color to it before we move on to the next piece so to do that head over to modify go down to appearance and the cool thing about Fusion 360 one of the many cool things is that you can not only choose a color but you can really specify the material type so let's actually dig into some of these materials they all have the same properties as these materials and over here I see a nice gold color so it's as simple as clicking on it once and I believe you just drag it up here so if you saw I like dragged it up into this in this design and then you grab it out here and you drag it onto your shape and I can just like drop and drag it onto every component to create the style I want and just like that let me go to the close option there you go one shape and then you just go ahead and hit save and over here it's asking us to add version description so I'll just say part one hit OK and if we check whoops like I said based on internet speed so you can see what's happening don't crash on me <laughs> you can see that it's saving over here Okay, so anyway, that's going to conclude this first part. If you want to see the other four pieces being made, head over to the second part. Otherwise, 
If you have them made, head over to part three.